When you hear people buzzing about how they need to do something about inflation and are curious who they are, the reference is to the Fed. The Fed is the nickname for the Federal Reserve Board, who oversees the Federal Reserve System. And that system is what is used to dictate the entire banking network in the United States of America. Every time a financial publication or news outlet mentions the Fed raising the interest rate in order to curb inflation or balance the economy, they're referring to this incredibly powerful and well-known entity, which very few actually understand. It serves as the central bank of the U.S., a decision that was not made lightly. When the U.S. was a dwindling nation just recently independent from the rule of Great Britain, there was constant debate, specifically between Federalists and Anti-Federalists, arguing over the balance of centralized government power versus local governments, including great discussion over the creation of a central bank. The main fear was that this was too close to the Central Bank of England, which had previously held monetary control over the colonies. Instead, many national banks were created as a way of stabilizing monetary values in exchange, with higher standards for business practices and having reserves to back up and support deposits, unlike many local banks. The back and forth between national banks and state banks perpetuated throughout the first century of America's existence, but everything changed with the panic of 1907. As Winston Churchill is famously quoted with saying, never let a good crisis go to waste. Although his crisis of World War II happened 30 years later, this sentiment goes back to the origins of human civilization. And that is what happened in 1913 when the Federal Reserve Act was passed and the U.S. was forced to adopt a central bank system. The Panic of 1907 came as a result of an ongoing liquidity issue for banks throughout American history. Due to the lack of reserves and uniformity across banks, unable to handle fluxes in the market and needs of its clients. In October of 1907, several banks and trust companies had lent money as part of a scheme to corner the market on the stock of the United Copper Company. When this bid failed and affiliated trusts and banks failed, Fear took hold of panicked depositors who had lost confidence in the unregulated and inconsistent practices of banks. As massive amounts of people withdrew their money, regional banks were unable to handle the run. During this three-week period, the New York Stock Exchange fell nearly 50% from its prior year peak, representing the eighth largest decline in U.S. stock market history. Founder of J.P. Morgan, J.P. himself, stepped up and convinced other bankers to pledge their own money to shore up the banking system, lessening the blowback of the panic. But it brought to light the severe limitations of a decentralized banking system, which could not manage massive crises at the national level that was now required of it. The good deeds of J.P. Morgan and his associates to take it upon themselves is worth commending, but it sheds light onto the power that just a few extremely wealthy individuals could have over an entire nation's economy. After much debate, legislators finally landed on a proposal that President Woodrow Wilson signed and enacted at the end of 1913, creating the Federal Reserve System and changing banking in the United States forever. If you're finding this video fascinating, invest in us by hitting the like and subscribe button so we can keep our social currency metrics in a favorable position. So it's no surprise, based on the panic of 1907, that the Federal Reserve was needed to regulate monetary policy, serve as a lender of last resort, and ensure financial stability. But how exactly does it operate, and what are its main functions? Well, the major balancing act of a central bank in the U.S. was built on preserving the interests of private banks, while also centralizing the responsibility of the government in reducing risks associated with periods of economic uncertainty and banking stress. Basically, it's a tale as old as the Revolutionary War. How much power should the federal government have in controlling the interests of its people? That discussion is why we never had a central bank in the first place, while Europe, of course, did. To address concerns needed for legislators of all political affiliations and representations to get behind the Fed, its design gave it three main components. A seven-member board of governors selected by the president and confirmed by the Senate for 14-year terms. Twelve regional banks spread across the country designed to serve the different geographies and needs of the demographic better. And the Federal Open Market Committee, made up of the board and a rotating basis of representatives from the regional banks. The Fed is designed in this way to ensure sentiments in the different economies throughout the country are considered in the decision-making process, and there is a level of independence from the actual money-printing entity, being the Treasury, all while offering a consolidated and centralized power to control monetary policy. It stops the banking system from running rampant by supervising and regulating banks, setting interest rates to inspire or demotivate borrowing and spending, and it controls the cash in circulation by buying and selling securities on the open market. For example, if they wanted to increase the supply of money in the banking system, they would buy bonds, therefore freeing up in liquidity all of the cash that they just used to make that purchase. Even things like ensuring your check clears, regardless of which bank you deposit with, can be thanked by a central banking system, because other banks don't have a fear that they won't receive the funds. As with everything in America, 
It's a system of checks and balances. So yes, the feds can be audited. That's done by the Government Accountability Office, or GAO. The structure of the fed is also very similar to how our national government is set up, carefully balancing top-down power with bottom-up interests. It is so integrated into our daily lives that it's hard to envision a civilization without it. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. The Federal Reserve is a cornerstone of US economic policy, emerging from a moment of financial chaos. Yes, it serves as a stabilizing force in a large and complex monetary system, but it also serves as a reminder of how crises often shape institutions and societies for generations to come. If you like this video, please subscribe and give us a like, and let us know in the comment section what topic you'd like to hear next. Thanks for watching.